Gospel of Matthew, Matthew uh, chapter 13, Matthew uh, chapter 13, and uh, in our Blue Bibles, this is page 1,518, 1,518 in our Blue Bibles, Matthew uh, chapter eight, 13, and uh, I'll be speaking from the whole of verses 24 to 43, but to begin, we'll simply read uh, verses 24, 25, and 26, the first three verses. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. 
Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. Father God, we thank you for these words of uh, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus and uh, this teaching about wheat and weeds, about the righteous and the unrighteous, and uh, those that uh, you will someday judge, uh, Father God, in your justice and uh, rightness, but also those uh, you will save uh, through Christ Jesus and through uh, the gracious work of salvation that you have done within us. And so I pray that you will speak to us uh, about, uh, Lord, uh, that uh, judgment to come and about uh, the importance of us being ready for it and the importance of our friends and uh, family and neighbors uh, being ready for it also. And so I pray that you will speak to us today. And I ask in Jesus' name, amen. I have a plant lying in my backyard garden under the snow today. <laughs> a perennial that I expect to rise this spring and spread uh, throughout much of the surrounding soil. It is a creeping sort of plant and has green and whitish leaves. It is uh, remarkably vigorous and tenacious. I can never quite get rid of it. <laughs> and the vexatious weed is called, of all things, Bishop's Gout Weed something like uh, preacher's bane or pastor's misery, if you will. The plant is also called more flatteringly snow on the mountain. <laughs> it is recommended by horticulturalists as a ground covering plant. And for that purpose, I do give it credit. It will quickly cover any garden space. <clears throat> and that's not my garden. That's much too nice for my garden. I've got raspberries in my garden. In this parable about the wheat and the weeds, the Lord Jesus explains why he lets the righteous and the wicked grow together in the field of souls. But he assures us also about the harvest and the judgment of those who always refuse to repent of their wrongdoings. Down at the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus is teaching the crowds of people who have come to him. And he is speaking to them in parables, stories, or riddles that challenge them to listen and understand. To begin, the Master has told his Galilean listeners the parable about the seed and the soils, which signifies the message about the kingdom of God come in near in Jesus and the various responses of people to that message. Now the teacher tells another parable, and this one is similarly about a farmer, a field, and seed. But the special concern is with the weeds that grow up among the wheat and that threaten the quality of the harvest. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus begins in verse 24, and he speaks about the long-awaited and much hoped-for rule of God that the scriptures have promised and that the Messiah Jesus has now come to earth to fulfill. The heavenly kingdom is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. And the teacher invites his listeners to imagine a diligent farmer who takes care to ensure the grain he uses for planting his field is fine quality seed, likely to produce a healthy crop of wheat. However, 
While everyone was sleeping, Jesus continues in verse 25, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. The farmer has an enemy, a rival grower perhaps, and a spiteful man who intends to ruin the crop of his neighbor by seeding it with weeds and making the harvest corrupt and worthless. The weeds the enemy sows are zizanion in the Greek text, and in English translations, the plant has been called tares, darnel, cockle, and even false wheat. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appear. Verse 26 says about the field of the farmer after his crop has risen and matured. Darnell grows plentifully in Israel and Syria and looks deceptively like wheat until the ear of the plant appears. And then the heads of the true wheat begin to droop, but the light-headed false wheat remains erect. Darnell also produces grain but the kernels are black. And worst of all, they are mildly poisonous. And when eaten will cause illness, nausea, and vomiting. So the false wheat truly spoils the crop and can leave the grain it produces seriously corrupted and unhealthy. And the enemy who has sown the noxious seed has acted maliciously and harmfully. In verse 27, the servants of the farmer or landowner come to him and tell him, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? When then did the weeds, where then did the weeds come from? Now that the heads of the wheat have begun to fill and the stalks have started to droop, the servants see the false wheat plant standing erect through the crop. And the workers are dismayed and bewildered. An enemy did this, the landowner replies in verse 28. He knows this is the work of an enemy because the farmer is a careful planter and knows well the quality of his own seed. And the landowner also knows his spiteful neighbor and the evil he is sadly capable of doing. Do you want us to go and pull them up? The servants now ask the landowner because they are anxious to rid the crop of the harmful and despised plants. No, the farmer answers in verse 29, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat within them. The weeds and the wheat stand close to each other. The roots reach down into the same soil. And pulling up the unwanted plants will also bring up the nearby wholesome wheat stalks and ruin them. Let both grow together until the harvest, the master instructs his servants in verse 30. And so he urges his workers to be patient and let the false wheat grow alongside the true wheat. They must leave the corrupt and harmful plants stand so the servants may preserve the good and wholesome ones. At that time, Jesus says in verse 30 also, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. After the crop has fully ripened and the heads of the wheat are drooping in the sun, they will be clearly distinguished from the still upright and now blackened heads of the zizanion, the false wheat. Then the harvesters will go out, pull up the weeds and tie them into bundles so the workers may later burn the false wheat, destroy all the bad seed and prevent it from ever infesting the field of the farmer again. And no matter if the harvesters should pull up some of the wheat, because the time will have come then to gather all of it, to thresh out the grain and the heads 
and to bring the true and pure seed into the landlord's barn. And what does all this about the weed, the wheat, and the weeds mean? In verse 36 below, we read that after Jesus leaves the crowd and the lake shore and goes into a nearby house, his disciples say to him, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And so the master tells them first in verse 37, the one who sowed the good seed or the farmer is the son of man. And this is the title Jesus most often uses to speak about himself, because he is the heavenly being and one like a son of man, whom the prophetic book of Daniel foresees coming in glory and having an everlasting dominion over the whole world. The field is the world, the teacher further explains in verse 38. And the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. And with these words, Jesus indicates that through his ministry, he has produced sons or children who are destined to inherit the kingdom of God. The Savior has planted the message about himself and his eternal kingdom in the hearts of his disciples. And they have believed in him and have become the living seed the true offspring or the righteous children of God, whom he will give an everlasting inheritance to. About the weeds, the zizanion, or the false wheat, Jesus explains next in verse 38, they are the sons of the evil one. The weeds are those like the Pharisees, who willfully refused to believe in Jesus. They even conspired to kill the righteous teacher. And the enemy who sows these weeds, Jesus says further in verse 39, is the devil. And so the master declares that Satan is the one behind the mysterious appearance of jealousy, hatred, and evil and that he has corrupted men like the hypocritical Pharisees and incited them to despise and plot against the Savior. But the harvest is the end of the age, Jesus next explains, and he speaks about the time of judgment for both the righteous and the wicked. And the harvesters are angels because they are the spiritual beings and heavenly servants that will administer the punishment and the reward God will, has decreed for all human souls. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age, the Lord declares in verse 40. This present worldly age will reach fulfillment. The time God has decreed for judgment will come. And just as weeds are pulled up and burned at harvest time, the sons of the evil one will receive their just punishment. In verse 41, Jesus warns further, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And so the master foretells that the angels will gather all who have led others astray and cause them to sin. And the ministers of judgment will bring together all who have continually practiced evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse 42 reads, And with these words, Jesus pronounces the awful end for the sons of the evil one. The fiery furnace is the place where harvesters throw all the weeds and burn the bad seed. But here it represents the fires of hell and the realm of perpetual torment Jesus warns about often in the Gospels. But in verse 43, the Savior concludes his parable about the weeds with a wonderful promise for the good seed 
and true wheat. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The scene Jesus recalls for the disciples is of a beautiful field of wheat, standing ripened and golden beneath the afternoon sun, or perhaps a vast mound of yellow grain lying happily on the threshing floor. The righteous seed, or the true children of God, will finally shine with the glory of the resurrection and heavenly immortality. And they will live forever in the kingdom of their almighty Father and never contend again with the enemy, his bad seed and his evil weeds. <clears throat> Harvest time is coming. The great day of judgment is drawing near. Like precious wheat gathered for storage, so will the children of God be raised to eternal life. But the weeds, the bad seed, and offspring of evil, they will be burned in the fire of just punishment. Happily and mercifully, you and I who belong to Christ Jesus by our faith and obedience to his holy way, we are good seed. We are wholesome wheat. We are the sons and daughters of God who are destined to live forever in resurrection immortality by the imperishable word of the gospel. As 1 Peter 1.23 assures us, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. And this is the word that was preached to you. Through the spread of the gospel and the growth of the church of Christ, the heavenly and almighty Son of Man continues to sow good seed in the field of this world. Everywhere the good news is preached and the message about Christ Jesus is heard, the holy seed sprouts, grows, and rises to Christ-like maturity. And the godly wheat souls stand ready for harvest and for gathering into the never-spoiling storehouse of God. You and I have believed the imperishable gospel. We have welcomed the living word of God into our hearts, and it has transformed us. It has produced in us, in us a harvest of righteousness. It has raised us up and made us stand in obedience and faithful service for Christ. By the grace of God and through the power of the gospel, you and I and all those who are righteous through Christ Jesus, we are the wheat in the field of this world. And we are the wholesome and fruitful souls whom God is gathering for an inheritance in his eternal kingdom. Praise the Lord. But until the end of the age and the great harvest day to come, along with the wheat and the holy offspring, grow the weeds sadly and soberingly. Not because God has made them so, not because they have been born weeds, but because the devil has planted bad seed within them, and they themselves have let it grow. In the darkness of worldliness and sin, while men and women sleep spiritually through carelessness and indifference, the enemy of the Son and the Father 
goes out into the field of souls and plants zizanion, weeds. The tempter entices human hearts and leads them astray with the wrongful desires of human flesh and with the common cares of everyday life. The adversary assails their unsure minds and incites them to doubt the goodness of God and to despise the message of Christ. And in this way, these human souls grow to become weeds and to rise and stand alongside the godly wheat. And for a while, the false grain may look very much like the tall stalks of righteous seed because the weeds seem to speak and act like the true children of God. But then doubt, bitterness, and sinfulness begin to raise their blackened heads. And the defiant weeds stand in stark and harsh contrast to the bowing heads, reverent hearts, and obedient lives of the true wheat. But why does the Lord of the harvest allow the bad seed to grow in the field of souls? Why do the sons of the kingdom have to contend with the sons of the evil one? Why does the master not send his ministering spirits, even now, to go and pull up the harmful weeds? Because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may root up the wheat within them. The Lord Jesus answers, let both grow together until the harvest. The lives of the wheat and the weeds are closely intertwined and rooted together in the soil of this world. And tearing out the souls of the seemingly righteous might drive the truly righteous to bitterness and despair. How unjust and how awful it would seem to us if all those we loved and all those we thought were destined for salvation were suddenly and mysteriously snatched away from us into darkness and damnation. And those who seem like weeds to us now and who live like the children of the devil, they may finally be good seed. Those who will yet believe in Christ, those who will be born again, through the imperishable gospel, and those who will become true, wholesome wheat and righteous children of God. Out of the great depths of his boundless love and kindness, the Lord Jesus lets the godly wheat and the unholy weeds stand together in the field of this world. And the heavenly master mercifully and patiently waits for you and me and for all the good seed to be redeemed and renewed by his ever-living word. But the day of the harvest draws near. Judgment must come. And the days of grace and suffering the weeds to grow alongside the wheat are surely coming to an end. How would it be if a farmer never weeded his fields and never rid his crops of poisonous darnel? The harvest would be ruined. The grain store would be spoiled. And those who ate from it would grow sick. Where would the justice be in that? Where would the rightness be in God forever tolerating evil and rebellion? And what if the Lord Jesus never returned to punish the wicked and reward those who have lived in godliness? But the word of God assures us that he surely is just 
and that the Lord of, har of the harvest will finally repay those who have troubled his righteous saints. And he will certainly punish those who have willfully refused and disobeyed the gracious gospel of salvation through Christ Jesus. At the time of the harvest, at the end of, this, of the age, and this present worldly order, the Lord himself will appear in blazing fire. And the powerful angels of heaven will be following him to carry out his justice. At that time, the master of heaven and earth will let tell his harvesters, the ministering spirits, to go out into the world, gather the weeds, bind them together, the sons of the evil one, and prepare them for their just punishment. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, the word of Christ solemnly warns, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So says the word of the Lord. But the day of judgment will also be the day of salvation. Because then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. And you and I will awaken to the glory of the resurrection. And the eternal Son of God Almighty and the Lamb Christ Jesus will shine upon us and will never ever set or grow dim. He who has ears, let him hear. Let him hear and believe and let him obey the truth and live eternally. Remember the pine beetle infestation that swept through our Jasper forest a few years ago? Swaths of reddened pines covered the surrounding mountainsides. <clears throat> And stands of infected trees blighted the town site and our favorite picnic grounds, Lake Annette. <clears throat> but then crews began logging the deadened pines and burning them in large piles. Because the standing trees were a fire hazard and hopelessly infested with the deadly parasite. And so the loggers cut piled and burned the beetle-diseased pine trees of Jasper. But not the spruce trees. They were fine and still stand today. So also do the majestic Douglas firs. They were not spoiled by the pine beetle. The firs remain wholesome and sound, and together the fir and the spruce keep Jasper and our forest evergreen. And so it will be with the sure coming harvest and judgment of human souls. The weeds who are hopelessly and unrepentantly sin infested will be cut down and taken away. But the souls who have become righteous and godly through Christ Jesus, they will live and grow evergreen for all eternity. Praise the Lord. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the warning uh, that it gives us of uh, the judgment to come. And we thank you that uh, we live now in the days of grace and the days of salvation where we can uh, turn to you, Father God, and to your Son, Christ Jesus, and receive him into our hearts and receive his Holy Spirit uh, into our hearts and minds so that the Holy Spirit will begin to uh, make us new, to give us a new birth, and to uh, make us more and more like Jesus and make us uh, live godly lives and help us to be the true children of God. 
and the true wheat of this world. Father God, I pray that uh, we will, uh, Lord, listen to the message. I pray that all our family, our friends, and our neighbors will hear the gospel again, and that your Holy Spirit will speak it in, in, into their hearts. And Father, I pray that uh, the weeds that might be there will not be able to extinguish the seed of the gospel in their hearts and minds, and that uh, they, uh, Lord, in the wisdom they have, will let the uh, gospel sprout and take root in their hearts and minds, and uh, may it flourish, and may your Holy Spirit cause it to grow, so that they too will become wheat in this world, so that they too will live godly lives, and so that they too will live for eternity. Father God, I pray that you will do this in the hearts and minds of our family, our friends, and our neighbors, and you will continue to do that same work within each one of us as we turn to you in faith and obedience and allow your Holy Spirit and your grace to work within our own hearts and minds also. And so I pray in the matchless and wonderful name of our Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.
man. And I speak Jesus over you. May the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you, make his face turn toward you and be gracious to you. May the Lord honor you and bless you and provide for you and grant you health and peace. Amen.